Hi, this is Paul Neal from Penn Productions and I'm going to do another tutorial today on the data channel modifier and what it can do for you in character rigging. Uh, here we have Gwen from years ago and uh, she's got a pretty standard rig in her, nothing fancy going on. Uh, if I pick something like the uh, arm for instance, uh, you can see it's nicely parameterized. It's just got a skin modifier and a turbo smooth that's uh, currently set to uh, off and viewport. Uh, so that we're not seeing the results of it. It's just uh, there to smooth things out. But you'll also notice that it's nicely skinned for as much as skin can do with linear skin weights. Um, it's you know solving some of the problems, but we're going to get collapsing in areas. Now with the uh, uh, current solutions, of course, with skin, we could also uh, utilize it uh, with the um, uh, DQ skinning and be able to get better solutions on the DQ skinning than uh, we were able to before. So. Uh, with DQ skinning, we can actually uh, go in and paint in some of the uh, you know uh, other areas. So if I just go and turn off the um, uh, materials, and we'll just say uh, shaded without maps, um, you can see that we've got uh, blend weights we can turn on, and DQ skinning is going to help with some areas uh, in the in the model. Um, so we could go in and start painting up some areas here and uh, and correcting some of this. Now I've got some of my uh, paint weight tools uh, installed here um, and uh, you know we can go in and, and paint in some areas of DQ skinning and you'll see that it solves some of the problems um, uh, go, that you know happen in a, in a model and uh, maybe just a bit more weight here and you can see it actually starting to pull the elbow back out the DQ skinning and it'll help um, certainly just do some uh, blending holding down shift uh, and uh, blend that in and uh, we can see what it'll do on the interior of the arm as well here um, and see what kind of a solution DQ skinning is going to provide for us here. And we'll crank up to our joint. And you can see it, you know, it starts to help, but you know, it isn't, it isn't great. Um, you know, DQ, DQ skinning will only get you as far uh, as it's, as it's possible. Uh, so uh, dealing with the quaternion weights, uh, it's going to get you some, better results in some joints. You're going to see that it sort of stops the crushing happening quite as badly and that can help a lot um, you know, as a starting point. And so we'll paint some into the uh, uh, wrists here and other areas that we're going to need it. You know, we might even want some around the arms where there's a twisting going on. And you can go around and paint your DQ skinning, uh, which, you know, anywhere you're going to need it in a model. Uh, what's also nice is it will uh, uh, automatically mirror, of course, so when you use your mirror weights uh, from one side to another, we got to go green to blue in this case, so I've got my uh, mirror uh, green to blue verts, and it'll mirror over your uh, DQ skinning as well. So with that said, let's move on to getting the data uh, operator uh, functioning. I'm going to slide back um, to my zero frame to get that started. And then I'm going to add the uh, data channel modifier. And in add operators, we can open that up and now we can uh, choose operators to add. We're going to start with delta mush and we're going to play around with delta mush a little bit. Probably heard a lot about this on the web. Delta mush uh, uh, is an input operator or it could be a processing operator as well and process things. In this case, you can see this arrow pointing down that says it's inputting data at this point. It's inputting vert uh, vertex data. It has some uh, settings and whatnot. It also needs to output the data. So I'm going to go down to the output operators and drag in the vertex uh, output. And the vertex output is an output operator and you can see it outputting to the vertex uh, information. And in this case, we're going to be uh, outputting to the position and replacing the position data in the model for the, uh, for the output. So Back in the uh, Delta Mush, one of the things you want to do is make sure you capture reset uh, pose. Uh, if you need to at any point in time, it will have captured where it was uh, first added and uh, started at that point. And so we can now uh, crank this along and have a look what our results are uh, with our Delta Mush. Now, uh, with Delta Mush, you can see that it really mushes the results. It's like a big relax based on 
um, where uh, deltas are changing in the model. So it's it's helping joints, but it's becoming very gushy. Now it could be a really nice solution if you're doing right a real noodly arm like a cloudy with meatballs uh, kind of character. It might uh, be good to crank up overall, but really it you'll see that it's it's reducing the volume in elbows and whatnot. So it's actually getting rid of the volume where we want to keep it. So what there is is this mass channel. You can mass channel it out with a, a given channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down below skin and we're going to add a vertex paint uh, modifier. And we're going to add it down to the bottom because we're going to be able to just uh, uh, collapse this out of the model. And I'm going to turn on the um, uh, you know, a, a vertex color uh, option here. I'm going to tell it to be a map channel, channel two, which is the one we want to use in our mush. And uh, I'm going to fill it with black so that we've got all black. So it's basically just gotten rid of any uh, deformation in the data channel now. It's all being uh, masked out with black. Uh, set it to white. And I'm going to set up my um, uh, where's it? brush options and just make sure it's mirrored. So it's mirroring onto the other side. And I can set up the weight now by painting in some uh, area on the inside of the elbow here where uh, we want it to affect and, uh, and sort of you know softening this in and making sure that it's uh, it's working nicely or give it some more weight with uh, shift and alt and of course your size with uh, shift and control hold down shift and I'm just going to um, uh, blend it a little bit uh, and um, you know again you can use your um, uh, blur brush, sorry, with this and just blur it out and uh, get it to blur, soften that result nicely. And so with that being said, we can then check and see what the result's going to be. So back up to the uh, data channel uh, and we can play around with some settings there. So let's have a look at uh, what we're getting. I think it was around 20 frame 25. So now when we play with the delta mush and work with it, you can see that it's only affecting that inside area of the arm instead of the rest of it mushing out everything else. So it's being masked out by uh, um, uh, map channel 2, which is nice because we can now paint in where we want solutions to happen and how we want to uh, correct that. So you can see it's correcting the inside quite nicely. And again, we wanted to make sure that we've got a nice fall off on that um, uh, vertex colors so that we can blend it nicely uh, and work with that. So that's Delta Mush. Again, it only solves so much uh, before it'll uh, you know start to cause other problems. So using the uh, vertex weights, great. I'm going to take this vertex weight channel down here and just say rename and uh, call it uh, channel uh, two, so that I know it's channel two. I'll be able to collapse that in. Uh, to the base model and don't have to leave it there because we can re-add vertex paint at any point in time and keep painting on whatever channel we want. It's just like UV coordinates. Uh, you can collapse the uh, unwrap anytime you want. So the next thing in the data channel then is going to be the uh, tension map. So we're going to go back to the add operator and here we're going to go in and say tension to form and I'm going to add that in um, and you can see now what it's done. We have this input delta mush that is the arrow in and down and the output uh, vertex output. We have tension map and it just has a straight bar because it saw an input. Uh, so it's kind of acting as an operator right now to uh, process operator as opposed to an input. We can change it to an input by right click and say replace. And now it's an input operator and it's replacing the data this time and not just trying to process data. So it's going to be inputting data again. And again, we're going to want an output. And you'll notice that the model goes and collapse itself down to nothing. And that's because we're inputting into position. We can just input into vertex colors uh, and have it uh, control vertex uh, colors. And again, now that we have another output here, outputting data again. So uh, with the tension map, uh, there's a few things we can do. So let's go along to frame 25 again and start looking at what it's going to do. I'm going to say enable display, but I'm going to turn off the vertex output here uh, so that we don't, um, we don't see any results coming out of the uh, uh, vertex output of the delta mush. And so we're back to that, you know, same problem here. But let's start playing around with the um, tension map and see what it does. So first there's a squash area and a stretch area. So what tension map's doing from this base pose again, again, we can say capture rest pose and make sure it's set correctly. Um, what it's doing then is, is it's tracking the length 
of edges. Now, make note, this can get slow and probably something you want to set an off in viewport uh, until render time again. Uh, because uh, it'll get slow on bigger meshes because it's tracking the edges, edge lengths of everything, which uh, you know obviously can be uh, you know a lot of calculations happening. I'm going to use the squash value. Let's, the squash value, you'll see I start getting blue as I crank that up, and the squash value is saying any edges that are getting shorter than they initially were, uh, we're going to start masking them out with blue, and we can turn up a range, which is kind of like a soften. It's softening it out. And there's also a grow shrink, so we can uh, grow that uh, and soften that area a little bit. And then we have the ability to do a relax, so we can relax those areas where it's uh, it's you know causing us problems. There's also a push. We could do a um, a push in if we wanted, and you know push and relax and try and get some uh, more shape back into the model at that point. So you can see it's starting to correct some areas uh, and, and helping with some areas. Now what we've also got is the stretch. And so we can crank some stretch up from the default here. And we can see that coming in again. We're going to give it some range to soften this selection area. Now if we wanted to grow it, whatever. And again, we can do a relax, which is going to start taking away the... Um, you know, the, the volume that we don't want. But again, there's also a push. We can push that back out again a little bit to try and retain some of that. Now, there is a bit of an advantage to uh, working with uh, the tension is because it'll work on both sides um, uh, for us. So I'm just going to go in and grab our um, control at the wrist and turn on animate. And at frame uh, 30, I'll just flip it over to the other side here. So we see it going back and forth. And back to the data channel. And so now what you can see is it actually tracking which side's compressing and which side's um, stretching those vertices. And it'll be having a reverse effect. It'll be pushing the outside out at this point. So we can see that the um, you know push value is pushing the outside a little bit now on that wrist. And again, we can play around with the values. Now what's nice is on both of these, uh, we can actually use morph targets. And we can control morph targets so that we can point, paint up morph targets like joint morphing in areas uh, and have it uh, control where it's actually coming up um, with, those, with those colors, um, which is you know, quite handy uh, what it comes down to. You could uh, go and paint it up and then uh, have it uh, push the, uh, the verts out uh, based on specific targets. In this case, we're just using the base values here. So uh, there's also masking. So we can mask these again if we want to uh, go and mask with uh, specific vertex colors and, and, uh, and clean up areas. Um, and one of the things I find is, let's go turn on the Delta Mush again. So it's now mushing probably more than it should have um, than it did before because of the, uh, the fact that we've got um, you know the tension map working as well. So we might want to go back and pull it back down a little bit um, in those areas. And with you know controlling it nicely, you're now getting a nice uh, solution at spots. So that's starting to you know control it quite well as we get these um, tension and delta mush. Now, of course, the order can also be changed uh, at any point in time. So let's take delta mush down below and its output down below. Um, and we can take a look at what the end result's going to be with it in a different order and see if it solves some of our you know, problems having it in a different order. And what you'll actually notice is I tend to get a bit better solution with Delta Mush happening after the tension map and allow us to be able to control uh, that Delta Mush uh, after the fact. I seem to be able to get just a little bit nicer solution in there. So this is the uh, compression side of it. You can see what's happening is, is that... Um, you know, the compression is not getting picked up, looks like, quite as much there on the inside now. And let's just turn that off and see if we can get the uh, inside to get picked up. So you can see it's controlling it a bit more. And again, we might, if you watch, as I crank this up and down, say the uh, squash value, you can see the upper arm up here starting to change value and, and squashing. And this is where doing a little bit of um, 
masking again might be a good idea. So again, let's go back. Um, I'm just going to turn off this output for now. And uh, let's go back down to the bottom here. And I'm going to add another vertex paint modifier. And in this one, I'm going to put it in channel three. And uh, let's show the colors. Let's fill it with black. And then we could uh, easily just do, if we wanted to do sort of an overall here for everything, um, it might be, you know, sort of the easiest thing to do is uh, to grab it from the front, uh, go into our vertex paint into vertex mode. So we can just hit one on the keyboard to get in and out of that. And I'm going to go in and grab a whole bunch of verts all the way up to maybe the edge of the sleeve here. Do the same on the other side. And I want to fill these specifically with white now. And that means I'm going to have uh, a blend going from one to the other, but it's a hard fall off and it may not be what we're looking for. So I'm just going to use the blur node. And if you notice, it's only blurring where it's selected. So turn off your sub object selection again. Now it'll blur the whole thing. It'll blur it all nicely together. So now that that's uh, going again, I'm going to say call this, just rename it for now as I'm working to uh, CH3. So I know which one's doing which, and uh, let's close those down for now. And back to our uh, data channel. And in our attention to form, I'm going to go and say a mask with vertex colors in channel two and in channel two. And now I could actually paint in and out where the best spots are uh, for it to function as well. So we can start getting really nice solutions. So you'll see that now the as we turn that on and off, it's not affecting the top of the uh, arm at all anymore. Uh, but we are getting a nice solution uh, on the rest of the model. So it's cleaning it up really nice and getting a much nicer uh, solution overall as it, uh, as it uh, flexes the arm. We'd have to check the fingers and everything else to be able to uh, know what's happening there uh, and whether or not it's uh, correcting everything. So again, it'd be really easy to add this to all kinds of different areas of the model to clean it up and get it to uh, work nicely um, and uh, to get it to look, uh, you know, very clean, um, you know, overall. So at this point, it's starting to look pretty good, uh, but we're going to uh, have to do some cleanup on this to uh, make it look really nice. Thanks for watching.